So yeah, we are going to people are going with me. No, no, over here because I watch the last immigration vlog. And you're here for a few information. And no worry. My got it, you see me? Normally, I didn't do them video, but I just saw me talk and I said, but wait. I have information like I can make a video on this. I never did no video like this before, but I said, yo, I can make a video like this because I have the information. Why not give? I always I give information. Anyways, I'm going to say, yo, I have the know-how. I'm freshly out of the process. So there's no better time to pass on the information for those out there who may need it. Because trust me, I needed it like this, but there was no one to give me. I had to just learn on my own and other people help me along the journey. But I have to do mostly, most of the research and know where to go and all these things. So I'm here now to help you to make that process a lot more easy. And if you're wondering what we're talking about, we are talking about immigration, how to become a Canadian permanent resident. You know what I say? Application, how long of a wait, what are the stuff that you need, and the do's and the don'ts. So stick around for that, watch the intro, and then we could get back into the thing. My life could have was some of your search happiness. Once you're in Canada as a foreign worker or a student. So once you're here as a foreign worker, student, visitor's visa, any one of those are a temporary resident, the first thing you want to do is to fill out an application form. You can fill this out online or you can download it and fill it out. Just in case you make any mistakes, then you put in the corrections and then you type that up on the computer. And then once you have that application completed now, you're going to need to get letters of recommendations from close friends co-workers family members you know if you go to the gym like a friend from the gym or your gym just rep just character reference letters to say okay this person is a good person and you know stuff like that so those and help your 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 application to be a bit stronger when you get letters from like your past and stuff like that see so once you have those letters and all of those stuff then there's a checklist that comes with the application form and you follow that checklist specifically and it, so as soon as you get each document you check that off one you have to have a valid passport that's number one you know what i say if you do not have a valid if your passport is about to expire you cannot leave the, you don't have to worry about leaving canada to get a renewed passport be it that you're jamaican and you know, say whoa i have to be in kingston or jamaica to get my passport no there's an office downtown Toronto. I'm not remembering it right now, but once I remember, I'll um, insert like a little clip right here so you can see the name of it and hopefully some GPS instructions how to get there. That office helps you in getting your passport right here in your very own comfort at Canada. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. You need a valid passport. You need a complete application with the checklist of all the stuff that it requires. That require the application is self-explanatory basically so once you now have these in place you get the, the the character letters and everything right you now need five is it yeah five hundred and fifty dollars this video is recorded right now in september of 2019 the prices the prices varies and they fluctuate as the year goes by but at the time when i was doing mine and even right now mr Ray just did his in order to submit this application form, you need to have 550 and some change there about. So let's say roughly 600 Canadian dollars. You need to have that to submit the application form. You know what I say? Once you have the application form now, all of that stuff, you're going to need to go to like um, a part of the checklist will tell you to. You need to go to like a post office to get a DHL envelope. Put your address and all of that stuff to ship it off down to Etobicoke at their head office. If you're in Ontario, whatever province you're in, then I don't know their main um, branch, but yeah, for Ontario, it's Etobicoke down in Toronto. It's Etobicoke. So once you get that done, then you'll get a tracking number to track your package. And once, once, but once they receive that application at Immigration Canada, they'll now send you an email address. So it's important to have yourself. And so if you're in the eight, if you're back in the hands of time, I'm going to break it to you. You need to have 
One, you pass an updated passport, a completed application form. You need to have an active email address. You know what I say? Or email account. So all of that is where you're going to they're going to contact you. They're not gonna give you a phone call or any text message or anything. They're going to email you every single step of the way. So ensure that you have an active email address or email account, right? So once you know you have your five hundred and fifty or six hundred dollars depending. You have a completed application form. You check off a list of everything that you need to put in the application form. You get the DHL envelope. You enclose that. You ship it off down to Etobicoke at the head office, right? Now, once they receive it at the head office, they're going to now send you an email saying, we have received your document. So once you get that email, you can start counting. The 10-month wait period begins right there. Not when you send it in, but when they actually email you and say, we receive your document. So you can start counting. So right now it's September. Let's say you send it in today. By three days time, depending on how, if you put it on Express. And to send in that application, to, to send that, that, that document, when you go to the post office, it won't cost you more than $10 or $15, depending on the weight of the, the document. Because the weight... And then the, the charger for the sticker to ship it. So nothing nothing over twenty dollars. You know what I say? But before I go more in the video, in terms of how much money you need to complete this entire process, it varies based on the year that you're in. But right now I can say you're going to need roughly, including travel traveling up and down and all of these things around two thousand Canadian dollars. That's a bigger deal than having to pay a lawyer. You know what I mean? I say? Ensure even before you send in the application form, you double check, you triple check, you flipple check, you quadruple check, any one of them check there, make sure you double check everything, make sure your application is solid because if you, have, if you have the slightest hint of an error on it, they're going to reject your application form. And then that $500 to $600 that you pay to submit the application form, it's non refundable. So these are the things that you need to bear in mind. Say so don't rush the application farm and then end up losing five five to six hundred dollars, right? So yeah, two thousand dollars overall. I'm gonna to explain to you further down in the video why I say two thousand dollars to complete it. Some liars are gonna charge you like four or five grand, and sometimes they, they they rip you off and you don't end up with anything. So two thousand dollars is not a bad way, especially when you're doing it yourself. It's very good to do it yourself. Because that way you pay attention to details and ensure that everything is perfect. Well, at least for me, right? So now we're at the point where Canada Immigration emails you back and say, Okay, we receive your application form. So you start counting from there. Now, 10 months from there, so say it's September now, they receive your application form. Mid-September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. So by the end of July to about the first or second week so give and take if you're going to send it in mid mid september so around mid august so that's about 10 months and a few days or a week around mid august you can look out for immigration canada to email you again saying okay we either um accept or deny your application no reasons for them to deny your application you forget to fill out a particular section you didn't have everything on the checklist you know what I say? You enter your name wrong. Stuff like that. So that's why I say it's very important to double check, triple check your application. Do not rush it because money and time is at stake. So let's give you the bad news first. Um, hope it not. Your results are you got denied. You have to wait, um, I think, another month before you can reapply. As I said, that's time lost. You do not want that. But the good news now, you have been your your application has been accepted, right? Then in that cover letter, they're going to say, "No, we accept your application form. Everything was good. You had everything filled out. You had everything on the checklist. Now it's time for you to do a police record or a police check, a police background check, and a medical, right?" Once they say that, once they say, once you receive that email, so let's say you receive that email. We're in 2019. You now it takes 10 months to receive that email, and you receive that email 2020 of August. Let's say for argument's sake, August 15, 2020. 
you receive that email you have three weeks from that day of receiving the email to get to them a completed um um police record both here in canada and your home country and also your um medical for canada and if you don't complete that within three weeks then again you your application can be denied and you have to reapply go over everything pay over all of that money you know what i'm saying so you need to be just just time yourself whatever jobs you're in workplace make sure they know say listen i'm doing this i'm going to i'm not i, I won't i'm not sure when i'll be called but once i'm called I, I don't care if i'm working or going to school i have to jump at this because i have such a limited time to get it done so three weeks is not a lot of time you know what i say when you have to run up and get all these things so make sure your manager if you go to school i guess you can just write out the stuff. but make sure you say anywhere you are working they know fair facts so listen i have to be up and about to get my business done and if it's a place that's not willing to comply you don't need that workplace because they don't mean you any good you know where i come from so yeah it give you three weeks to get your police record check and your um forget the background check both here and in your your home country as well as um what was this other thing i said holy um a medical report no another reason that you can be denied if it's you have a criminal background here in canada so do please don't give no problem Just don't go and yourself no trouble you see me a, a, a parking ticket simple thing we're not talking about them thing we're talking about you get arrested and stuff like that and obviously if you're here in canada then chances are you may be good back home but you never know you have a charge you wave over your head back in your home country you never know about it so it's also a good way for just being disciplined and behave yourself goes a far way. God, trust me, when it comes to that time when you say, say Yo, I do one time that you did this, me, I'm a thumb off in your face, you know. I'm get locked up for a couple of hours, prevent me from getting my permanent residence right now, you know. And then the biggest headache come by, God, trust me, me, I'll give you a heads up for now. When it comes to that point in time where you realize, say, Yo, me, I do a police background check. You're nervous how when you know saying you find no problem because that's how the human mind works. The human mind works. Like you wanna get through all these emotions, anxiety start take you over. You know what I say? You start worrying, say so you are one day if this something I mean never. Everything you start worrying. That well that's for me. But rest assured, once you know say it's not a problem, child, then you should be fine. And the next thing, when you out there and have sex, do the thing them protected, wrap up is something. You understand what I say? Because let's say you have some deadly diseases and then you do a medical and that show up in a medical report, that's a reason for them to deny you that that, that permanent residency. You know what I say? Even though you're so far in the application. But because you got touch Susie without no boots for that one night, they feel nice. And Susie gives you some itching or David gave some itching. David and Susie out there, I mean, only directly, I use my name for reference. Don't beat me bad. You see me? So just wrap it up at all time. Don't make a little moment of pleasure ruin the rest of your life. You see me? Because trust me, when critical moments like these arise, that's how you, re you realize the importance of wrapping it up and just call it quits, walk away, live for say another day type of vibe. You see me? Fortunately for me, I always wrap it up. And I don't, I don't chuck badness. I just try to live a normal life. Even though I'm not normal. But yeah. You see me? I just try to live a law abiding life and a clean life. Anything can happen to me at any given time. But I don't put myself out there in the way of getting it done. If it happen, I just want them something. But I don't mean necessarily put myself out there. Come back to the topic now. So yes, let's say now you have a clear background here in Canada and Jamaica. And yeah, in terms of where... You can go to get like the medical report done if you're in Ontario. I'm speaking for Ontario. I don't know about the rest of places, but most likely when they send the email saying that okay, you have three weeks to complete um your police background check as well as your medical, they'll also give you a list of certified doctors that they work with because they're not gonna send your family doctor to get this um medical report done. Can you know your family doctor can always catch up something give you? 
they have their certified doctors that work with the, the immigration office and the different locations so you don't have to worry about oh who am I going find an immigration doctor no they provide all of that but if you want to know where they are my previous vlog where me and Miss Ari went to Ajax over on Raza and you can watch that and find out where and if you want to know where to go and get your police check done I also have in a previous vlog with me and Miss Ari where we went to Scarborough and you can also find out where to go you know what I say watch those videos and it will tell you in those videos it gives you details on what documentation you need to take with you on the day off each thing so you don't have to go back home and as I said you have three week window to work with so time is of the essence and you can allow fee because of um, mismanagement of time and you never organize well enough you go out and then you don't have certain documents and they send it back you have to come the next day and something happened you couldn't make it and then time run up on your boom and you lose a 500 to 600 dollars can't say age and never tell you no you see me so have these things in place now look on the positive side you have all of that so everything costs money so to do the medical now it's around at this time of the recording 2019 september it's around I want to say about $280 there about to do the medical. It's it's expensive, yeah. To do the medical, it's about $280. Once you do the medical, you don't have to worry about it. Because they're working with Immigration Canada. They send your result directly to the office of immigration in Etobicoke. And they attach that with your file. Because you'll always, in the cover letter where they send you, you always have like a file number to track everything to know that this is Adrian. Um, medical report to attach to his application form now when you go and do the police check now i think the police check is about 150 to 180 dollars but it's always safe to have more than less you see me so when you do the police check you do two police check one for canada or i think it's a, yeah about 120 or there about so you do one for canada they do the um the electronic scan where they just scan your fingerprint to see if you have any criminal history now for your home country you now they, they do the old school one where they put your fingers in the ink and all of that good stuff you know what i say once they put your fingers through the ink they put that in an envelope and then it will you will also get everything you're doing has a checklist so you'll know what documentations you need when they get all of that done now you can send it off to your home country with also it attached with a letter giving the person permission to act on your behalf to collect um your 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 background to to run a survey for your background check in your home country now if you don't have anyone back home where you can trust or you don't want nobody knowing your business you just want to do this low key you can also there's an option where you can, can send it directly to their head office and they will do all the necessary work and then they'll send it back to canada to immigration Canada so you don't have to worry about that because as I said you'll have a file number that will attach everything so they know that's yours that's yours you know what I say so that's one way of doing that now you have a three week window so it will take a little bit more money but it's worth it if it says to get it express piano an additional 50 Canadian dollars to get it done express because three 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 window three weeks window you can't afford to mess up on that so do express if you must just to get back everything within at least a week and a half so just work on it just like that see so now that's out of the way all of that has been submitted you're going to get an email again saying we have received your medical report we have received your um police background check we will get in contact with you you're about 11 months in now see then roughly within the next two to three months they're gonna contact you saying whether or not you had a criminal history or any infection in your medical report and they're gonna deny you boom bam bam but now good news we get we have good news we are work with so they say okay everything was okay with your application everything was okay with your medical report everything was okay with your police history this is the date and time for your interview you know me i said that's about two to three week, months after or right, sometimes it can happen within a month because they said two to three months but with, within two to three months but you know that it can come earlier than late because they told you in the beginning 
within two years before they get back with you with a decision and you get back to you with a decision within 10 months so that's how they get it done you know what i say they just give you that time frame so if you wait you don't feel afraid and i say oh boy but if you see two years passing they get you, you know say a problem did they the application they last somewhere but we work with positive energy as i said so now time for you to do an interview it's not that serious people think it's an interview if you have a jacket and tie and you're going to go there like you're looking at a job and they're saying okay what is your name, this and that and all of them stuff there? No. It's basically, they're going to ask you stuff that you already know. That's on your application form. So you don't have to think hard about it. You know what I say? Obviously, if you're married to someone and that person have children and them thing, they're going to ask you, say, what's the name of that chick? They may ask you random questions like, what's the name of your spouse's children? Just to make sure that that relationship is legitimate. You know what I say? And of course, you're going to make that person know, say, okay, once you know it's a sponsored thing, you're responsible for this person for such a period of time. If you do this thing by yourself, they're going to make you know, say, okay, these are the, 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 these are the stuff that you need to bear in mind. And just basically saying, welcome to canada so when they say you should come for that interview they give you the date and the address in etobicoke again now as i said it's not an interview where you have to be there at a certain time but it's good to be there early because a lot of persons are going to be there and it's a first come first serve so even though it's an interview it's not an interview where they say okay come one they say come nine o'clock and you go nine o'clock and you have to get through nine o'clock because your spot is already withheld no it's a first come first serve. The office opens at 8.30. So try to be there for at least 7.30, 8 o'clock. So the sooner the better. You go in and you just get out. You go in, you sit down, you wait, you pull a tick. You know what they make something? You pull like a number. You pull a number, you wait on the number to be called. Hopefully you are the first person. They decide the first person then call. You stand up to their window. You're not even sitting on no tree. You just stand up to the window. The agent, they will talk to you and they'll tell you, as I said, if you're sponsored, if it's a family member that's sponsoring you, they'll let the family member know that. Listen, are you aware that you're responsible for this person and you have to go on the oath and say, yes, you're responsible for the person for such a time. And if you're doing it by yourself, whereas you're a student, a foreign worker, anything, and you're applying, then they'll let you know, okay, your name is Desmond Ray or your name is Adrian Morris and this is what you know and they say okay welcome to canada now they're going to hand you like a cover letter saying that welcome to canada you're now a permanent resident but with that paper you cannot travel on that document right so when they give you that they also give you a form to go ahead and and get like your a new social insurance number your sin number your sin number as a permanent resident and a and a temporary resident and a foreign worker is different right it, it i think it begins with a different number i think for permanent residents it begins with the number nine so that's how employers know if you come to them with as a foreign worker they'll and you give them your sin number because they have to give all employers your sin number they'll say um do you have a work permit before they give you the job because they can tell from your sin number that you're not a permanent resident you know what I say? So when you become a permanent resident now, on that day, in the same Etobicoke, in the same building, just literally down the hall, they have Service um, Canada, where you go and you update to the permanent resident SIN number, and they do it for you right there in minutes. You, have, you don't have to pay any money for that. You know what I say? They give you a new SIN number, guard it with your life, because if an next person gets hold of your SIN number, that's them getting hold of your identity. And you know what they say? Reputation is everything. Guard it with your life. Because once your identity get, identity get ruined, you know, you run your face getting ruined. You can't fix the face, but the identity is one of the hardest things to fix. So your SIN number is not something to play with. Memorize the number if you can. Put away that document in a safe, dry place. If you have a little, um, one of them you could put um, metal safe there or something like that keep it in a safe place don't walk around with it in your wallet because it's going to come in the form of a paper they used to give out a card back in the days they, they don't do that anymore because as i said people lose the card people hack into the system and use their identity so they give you a paper memorize the number and then they'll also going to give you a, a sheet with that explaining to you how to keep your sin number safe and who to give and who not to give type of vibe so they're not just going to give you a sin number and say hey 
take your sin number and send it out there to create chaos. You know what I said? So yeah, once you do that now, now you're as a permanent resident, you're also going to need to update your health card because you know here in Canada, health health um to go to the doctor is very free in certain regards. If you're zero to twenty five years old or you're under twenty five twenty five and under, you visit the doctor for free. Your medications are free. If you're over twenty five like myself, God go with you. Yeah, if you have money to buy your medication. But you can't you go to the doctor for free. You do your scan your X ray all of them thing there for free. But when it comes down to the medication, yeah big man and big man then if you go buy your one of that and basically I tell him. You see me? So you need to update which is what we did in the last video with me and Mr. Ray. We went and we updated his um what you call that something eh? Health card. Yeah. But the health card you, you can't you, you don't do it in the Etobicoke building. You only get your SIN number updated in the Etobicoke building. You know in the immigration building. So you have to go to Service Ontario now, wherever service Ontario or service Alberta service, whatever province you're in, and go to that service place now to get your um health card done. Once you get that, they'll say, okay, they'll mail it out to your address and check out that video as well. For more details, it will tell you all, it will show you all the documents that you need to take with you in order to get your health card. You know where I come from? And once you get that done, two, three weeks, you get your health card in the mail. And then after the interview, within a month, you get your PR card in the mail. When you get that PR card, it's the same rule applied with your sin number don't just walk around with it in your wallet keep it in a safe dry place until you're ready to travel you don't need a PR card for doing nothing but traveling you know what I say if it lasts you have to pay at least two to three hundred dollars to get it renewed and stuff like that so you don't want that now you see how the two thousand dollars come into play because you have to be driving up and down so you pay five oh yeah one thing I forgot how did I forget this and yeah, I said, boy, you know, it's about the PR card. So yeah, after, after, um, when you go for your interview, so I, 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 I missed this point. When you go for the interview, on that day, just before you go for your interview, they'll send you an email saying you have an interview. You have to pay for your permanent resident card because that card is expensive to make. It's not free. So that's where another chunk of money come in. But I think it's $490 at this time when this video is recorded for your PR card. You know what I say? So you have to pay for that PR card online. And then on the day of your interview, you take that paper with you to show them. And they call it that. So that's how you pay for that. So $490 for the PR card. Now, if you have the money when you're doing the application, you can pay for the PR card. If you are denied, if your application is rejected, then you get a refund of the PR card money, but not the application. The application fee is non-refundable. But if you have all the money when you're doing these paperwork, so I'd say, yo, just pay for the, the, the application and the permanent residency card, which will amount to about a thousand nine hundred, one thousand one hundred or eleven hundred, or you'd say, that would amount to that amount. So you get that off your head just in case at when it's time to get your PR. Let's say some unfortunate event happen and you're broke. You know, and the money for look both here and all of the rest of the money you put gone down in June. But if you have all the money at the time, just pay for your application and your PR at the same time. Saves you a lot of energy, I believe. Isn't it? So yeah, after everything is said and done, but you just did. But after everything is said and done, after they say welcome to Canada, there's no set time for you to go and get your health card or your SIN number. But it's important to just do it right away. Just do it as soon as you can. You know what I'm saying? But unlike your police record and your health, you don't have no set time to go and do it. It's up to you. If you don't want to go do the health card and you get sick of morning, just know you have to pay money to see the doctor. You know what I'm saying? If your health, your, your previous health card is expired. So that's basically the process. I hope I explained it as much as possible to you. But that's how all of that two thousand dollar would come in. So you'd pay five fifty for the um. For the application, four ninety for so five fifty. Let me, let me do the maths for my phone. I'm not the best at maths. Give me the community. So five fifty. Or let's say for argument's sake, six hundred dollars for the application plus five hundred four ninety. But just say five hundred 
for the um the PR card that is at 1100 plus you're gonna pay two hundred and eighty dollars for your medical plus you're going to pay one hundred and twenty for the police record that's one thousand five hundred there plus you have to pay money for all these days to go about your daily business you have to pay express fee to send off your, your to send off your um what you call that to send off your police check back home and fear so before the, the fear and the sending fee and all of those you have 1500 so far you see me so with all of the other lunch and gas money if you drive or transportation just roughly say 500 so in total two thousand dollars can get you get you quite well through this process you see me if the if this video was helpful in any way don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because it helps and it shows other people that actual valid information is on this video and it can help them share this video i don't normally say to share videos but i think this is a very important video share this with some friends and family even if you have your pr or your um citizen of canada someone out there needs help and that's why we do this because we need to help people because when we wanted the help we didn't know where to go we had to do the full research but it's right here for you so as i said you may not need the help but someone you know or you have a Facebook, share the video on Facebook, it never costs you a dollar. You never know when your contact will then a need will just prideful but don't want to ask. See this video and watch it and it help them out. You know what I say? Each one help one. Don't live for yourself alone. You see me? Not because you are a resident or you are a citizen, you don't care about the world. No, we know that that's something there. Because if you were in the situation where you wanted help, I'm pretty sure you would want someone to feed you information like this. Information goes a far way. You may not you may not be there you may be a student just arrived in canada you don't already yet but it's good to have the information so when it's time to get there you have a clear navigation as to how to get there and get lost you know what i say so once again you don't know the thing set a gum tv represent if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing and i am not only a vlogger i am a chef full time i just vlog for make me people in my kitchen know say yo we there the same way so check out my cooking channel Maris Time Cooking on YouTube, you know me I say. Check me out on Instagram hot underscore chef. That's a H A W T underscore C H E F for all the daily thing them. I don't know man I got the gym. I'm not so big yet, but may I get there? I move from 130 to 150. Check out my Instagram, check out my Snapchat, Gamp. Everything will be on the screen here, by the way. Check those out. If you want some daily motivation, I upload on it daily in my stories on Instagram, on my Snapchat. We're just in at the gym and we have a hard at this. You know what I mean? Life not perfect, we not perfect, but we are trying to live life to the fullest and just try to help some people along the way. Because I don't know, people help me, so I have to help somebody back. And and the people and what you help are going to help you. But nonetheless, help somebody. You see, because you never know you have your youth, them and your family members, somebody out there going to help them one day. Bear that in mind. So, until next time, safe travel, panic gravel. Go and big up for yourself.